We're speaking today at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit with Sherry Blair of the Blair Foundation. Thank you so much, ma'am, for speaking with us. It's on my Bloomberg pleasure. Quint. Um, when you see this summit and the conversation about women entrepreneurs, especially in India, what do you think needs to be done right now to give them a big push, especially in terms of funding? Well, first of all, can I say how exciting it is to be here and to see this room full of many, many able women and, you know, men who are also equally supportive. And it, it, it in itself is a huge boost, I think, for women's entrepreneurship here. But what needs to be done? Well, you know, the truth is that in India you have many, many talented women and yet you're not using them within your workforce. So only 27% of women over the age of 15 here in India actually are engaged in, actively in the economy. So that's a huge waste of resources. And even more interestingly, 67% uh, of female graduates do not go into the workforce after graduation. So a lot of money has been invested into their education, and yet it is not then manifesting itself in your economy. So more needs definitely to be done. And what, why is that? Well, we say that there's um, three things, really. One is is societal assumptions about what is appropriate for, for, for women to do. I think this is about whether women go into the workforce at all, but I also think when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's also about feeling that entrepreneurship is too risky, that uh, it's too risky for a woman. And many of the women entrepreneurs we've worked to have told me their stories have said that uh, their parents wanted them to go into much more steady government-type jobs. Um, and some of them, in fact, didn't tell their parents that they'd given up such jobs in order to start as an entrepreneur until their business was already up and running and being successful, simply because they were worried that their parents um, would be disappointed and they didn't want them to be disappointed. You know, uh, uh, ma'am, when you speak about women in the workforce, perhaps in India or urban India, there is more acceptance about women going to the workforce, but there is now a situation where a woman is supposed to handle all of the work yeah. and all of the work at home. Yeah. Uh, you described some stories during your session. And is that fair as well? Because you're, you're, it's, you're doing the double shift. It's not only unfair, it's actually impossible. And, you know, you cannot expect... Uh, in, in today's world for women to both be economically active and sh shoulder the entire burden of the caring responsibilities of the family. And one of the good things is, and I, I speak as a, as a mother of uh, three sons and one daughter, and my two boys are now both in their early 30s, is that they, um, they themselves also want to have a, a share in the caring responsibilities as well. I've, I've got a, a grandchild now who's a year old, and my, my son wants to be involved in the bringing of his children. I think that's not just people in, in Western Europe. I think that also the younger Indian men are starting to realize that they're missing out on part of their personalities if they're not engaged. So, as I said before to the young women, choose your partner carefully, one who's actually prepared to, to support you and take pleasure in your success as well as his own success. Any one last quick tip for women entrepreneurs when they go looking for funding? Maybe you could look in the camera and give that tip to people looking uh, for funding. What should they say in their pitch? Listen, first of all, you've got to believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself and what you're doing, how can you possibly convince anyone else? So we try and help women get that confidence because they know they have the skills to be able to put their ideas into practice. Thank you, Sherry Blair, for speaking with Bloomberg Quint. Thank you. It's pleasure, man.